Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now I finally done something with the GTX 670 um, and I did decide that I wanted to make more videos where I show things actually running. I did not do this here and I'm actually happy I did not do this because this card very much did not do anything impressive which makes me kind of yeah upset. Um, so I was actually expecting this card to do quite well uh, and it didn't and yeah so let's just go over what I did and why I think the card might not be that great. So uh, you haven't seen this card in quite a while this is the GTX 670 for the win from EVGA. I never got the stock heatsink with this card I got this with the Accelero Mono uh, heatsink that I have um, and it did come with like custom VRAM and VRM heatsinks. I removed those, those are new. I reattached those because running the VRM naked is a bad idea. Um, and yeah, so I've gone around to running the card again. Um, mostly I've been putting off running the card just because no custom air cooler I have actually fits the card except the one that came with it and that's not really powerful enough because this connector right here just collides with the Morpheus and the Accelero, like the other Accelero heatsinks. So the only thing I can run this with is with the small-ish heatsink that it came with and on water. So I ran this on water, actually lapped the, the, the block. I recently got some uh, sandpaper and you can see here I this is like a test run. This used to be the uh, GTX 470 IHS. And here you can see how non-flat that actually is. This is about an hour of lapping with like uh, 60, 180 and 400 grit sandpaper and you can still see the nickel in it. And you can see how rough it is, like I did not use any smooth sandpaper on this yet. So yeah, um, the block looks much better. Uh, it actually, like it's basically like a mirror, though in the middle it's not quite as soft because I um, didn't sand it down enough. But it's, it's still better than what it was before. Um, so yeah, the card, uh, the PCB of it is not really spectacular. It's basically a GTX 680 reference PCB, just with the 670 core on it. Uh, it's a four-phase uh, V-core. Uh, there's a lot of unoccupied capacitor pads, same on the back, uh, just that I actually occupied some of those with uh, capacitors. Uh, memory, just your standard two-phase, which I couldn't put heatsink on here. So I put it on the back because on the front it wouldn't... Like those MOSFETs are just far apart from each other that the heatsink doesn't fit. Um, so yeah. So before I modded the card today, um, I was expecting this to do kinda well. Because this card ran pretty much the same clocks at the same voltages that the 780 Jetstream did. And the 780 Jetstream turned out to be an awesome card. It was really fun. Like it did over like 1437 core. Um, so I was like, hey, this runs kind of the same clocks at the same voltage. If I volt mod this, which I've now done, and give it the same kind of voltage I did into the 780, maybe this is gonna do over 1400 as well, which would be really nice. Um, as you can probably tell by now, it did not. Um, actually, I never went up to that kind of voltage because the card just kind of crashes. It doesn't shut down, like it doesn't hit over current protection or anything. It just, um, if you set the voltage to over 1.25 volts behind the core, like measured at these at the core capacitors, not at the VRM, the card just crashes. Sometimes even on desktop, but at, at least like it's gonna crash when you run a benchmark. And I don't actually know why. It's the VRM wasn't hitting over current protection, it wasn't hitting over temperature protection, the card just kinda crashed. And I have a suspicion that it's still something with the VRM. Because when the card crashed was either when a load started or when a load ended. So let's say I run GPU render test, a GPU Z render test, increase the voltage, and then close the render test, the card crashes. But it runs the render test fine. So I'm like, maybe this is just a voltage regulation thing and whenever a transient occurs, the VRM just kinda 
puts out a voltage that is so low or so high that it just hits some kind of protection and resets. Um, because the DRM doesn't turn off, the car just kind of crashes and you have to um, you have to press the reset button. Um, so, yeah. I have removed the ePower 5 from the GTX 580 since... Um, well, I'm, I haven't given up on that card. I've just more like postponed that project indefinitely. So the ePower 5 is free again. And I was considering putting it on this card. The only way is just attaching it would be kind of hard because of that connector again. Like, doing it like this would make it really awkward just to position the card. Doing it like this would be really weird to attach here and... Maybe on the back you have v-core and ground strips right here and uh, doing it like that Could be an option, but then how do you power memory because you then got memory power over there and memory power needs to go here <laughs> so I Guess I'll find out like I, I, I'll figure out a way like whatever. But there's another problem if I want to use the e-power I Think I will have to invest into a new soldering iron so uh, as you see here, there's a lot of solder, especially this blob here. There's a lot of solder left on the e-power, and that's not because I left it there, because I couldn't remove it. So, this uh, soldering iron, that's an Ursa PTC-70, I think. It's a 75 watt iron uh, that, I've, that I got a bigger tip for, so it actually works well. Um, this, well, this is the only soldering iron I have. That I use this for everything. And it does work. You can make e-powers with it. It's just that your connections are gonna look like this and they're probably not gonna perform as well. So I was thinking maybe I'm gonna get that 150 watt iron that their Bauer and Bildsort are using, which is basically this just in 150 watts and with an even bigger tip. Um, that would pretty much empty the budget for the month. Um, so I have to hold off on getting more, like my thermal paste is getting empty my flux is probably gonna like the the tube came half empty so yeah my flux is probably okay my solder is i have enough but like yeah i, I could need some thermal paste i could need i could buy some more capacitors and and things like i just need supplies generally like thermal pads thermal putty um i wanted to get an eprom reader writer this is not they're not the point of the video the point of the video is the card um, so yeah, it shuts down at what I wouldn't describe as high voltage, like 1.35 and up, that what I would describe as high voltage, considering this runs at almost 1.2 stock, 1.25 is not high voltage for me, and this is the highest you can run on this card without it shutting down, which is, yeah, that's, uh, kind of disappointing. So the maximum core clock I reached on this was 1320. That's the same clock my 780 Ti Windforce ran stock without any changes. Just like increase the core clock until it crashes. 1320 is what this card runs, volt modded and also cap modded. So let's let's get into some of the cap mods. So the memory received these three capacitors. Um, these are all capacitors I just scavenged. All the yellow ones are from the GTX 580 uh, Zotac that I turned into an e-power. Um, and the two black ones could be from the 580 gain ward. I'm not sure, like from some other card. I scavenged these somewhere. So three times 470 microfarad for the memory. And then four times another 470 microfarads for the core. These two, closer to the core. These two just for bulk. I could add three more, but I just kind of ran out of capacitors. And then there's this one that I attached ages ago. Um, so, yeah. Um, more capacitors. No CAN-type capacitors. I could add some. I could add some motorized ceramics. There's also some, some empty pads here. Didn't bother with that. It was just a kind of quick mod. Um, I can't really tell how much the capacitors helped. I didn't test for max memory clock. Really? Like it ran plus 700, but I think it did that before. And on the core, well, I also increased voltage, so I can't really tell what they did, but they, uh, I mean, it's more capacitors on a card that doesn't really have a lot of them on an architecture that is known to scale with like 
voltage and capacitors, so it probably did something. I just can't quantify it. Um, so yeah, then for your for the volt mod, uh, yeah, hookup point is right here. That's the hookup point. The controller is an. Uh, can you see it on the? Yeah, it's an NCP five three nine two P. Don't know, like. Where do I have my light? Yeah, it's a five NCP five three nine two P. See it? Come on, camera. There you can see it. So that's your hookup point uh, for the volt mod. I used a two hundred kilo ohm potentiometer. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, should give you. I actually don't know where this tops out because, well, again, the card kind of shuts down if at like pretty low voltages already. Um, but yeah, you might want to use a slightly smaller one if you want to go really high voltage, like 1.45. And I'm pretty sure the VRM would blow up at that point. Um, actually, I wouldn't like. I was. Like, I, when I ran the card, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna be soft with this one. If this VRM blows up, I'm completely okay with it. I'm just gonna attach the power. Because the card might be destined for that anyway, especially after what I know about the card now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this, this card was very much not fun. Um, I mean, it was kind of fun. It... Uh, it, it, it still ran faster than before. Faster topped out at 1267, now it does 1320. Neither of these are really impressive. Um, it's still faster though, like, yeah. I mean, I made it faster, but I didn't make it fast enough. It's <laughs> basically what I'm trying to say. Um, also, I didn't vote mod memory because that controller there is one of the unidentify like unidentifiable ones. If you Google whatever is on that controller, you're not gonna get any. I think I actually Googled the markings on the controller and I got some sort of address in the US. So, yeah, uh, it probably is a rich tech controller. They do have a PDF how to decode the thing. I think I have that PDF somewhere. I could probably find out what this is and find the feedback pin, and then mod memory. Uh, am I gonna bother with that? Hard to say. Um, like the EPOW 5 is just... I don't know if the EPOW 5 is worth wasting on this. Um, because like the, the EPOW 5 is meant for like high-end cards and this is a GK104. This is very much not really that high-end. This would be fine with one of these six-phase e-powers I made from 580s. I would just have to detach it from my 460. Because I've... Well, I could run that one some more, but like I don't really feel like that. So I could just remove that one. That one's easier to remove because it's using cables, not copper. Uh, yeah, not pure copper thingies. I could attach it to this. Uh, it wouldn't be that big of a VRM upgrade. It would still be two more phases. Um, so yeah, and then I could vote mod memory because that EPO only has one rail. Uh, that could help the card. I don't know if it will. Um, so from what I can tell this card, like this has been scaling kinda well so far. Like, I mean, stock, this was, like, I think 1.175, and I brought it to 1.25. That's 75 millivolts. That's not that much, and it still scaled from 1267 to 12, uh, to 1320. Um, that scaling isn't... That's actually decent scaling. That's, that's not bad. It's just that the voltage ceiling is kind of low. Um, so if I attach the 6-phase e-power, which can run... Well, I mean, a 580 puts a lot more current than this does. Uh, also, this just runs re generally higher voltage, so uh, current draw should be slightly lower if you assume power draw is about equal. Um, yeah, this would probably be fine with one of the f f 580 e-powers. Uh, maybe that's the next step. Um, but yeah, as, as the card is right now, I'm kind of disappointed. 
Um, cause like yeah, uh, it's, it and it, it just isn't really that impressive. Like for for the sort of mods I did to the card, I was expecting more than just thirteen twenty. Cause as I've said, cards can get that clock stock. Like good cards to be fair, but like it's still something that some cards can do stock and this one is cap modded and overvolted and running on a lapped water cooler with a really powerful fan. Like the cooling situation, I think this ran under 40 degrees load. Or maybe at 40 degrees load. Like this was getting some mega cooling. Uh, so yeah. I don't want to drag this out too much now, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I've done something with the card now. I always felt bad for just having it sit on my shelf and not doing anything with it. Um, but yeah, uh, didn't really, didn't really turn out to be a great card. I mean, I, it might be still be a great core and memory. Um, I actually haven't talked about the memory. Yet. The memory is Samsung. This is my only 28 nanometer card that has Samsung memory. This is two gigabit D die. As it's my only card and I have never voted this, I do not know how well this does, but I've seen other 600 series cards with Samsung memory, which could be the same I see, it could not be the same I see. I've seen a lot of voltage scaling on those. I'm assuming this one will also like voltage a lot. Um, so good memory, a core that looked like it is pretty good, and so far it's been scaling, like... I think the 780 Jetstream would uh, do about the same clocks at the same voltage still. It's just that this quite literally has half the VRM the 780 has. To be fair, it's also just a GK104, but this VRM just seems inadequate because I don't I like I don't know why a card would crash just because I overvolted and not really like by a lot. 1.25 is not a lot. Um I think it's just the VRM doing weird stuff. So um, I guess the best way of improving this card is just replacing the VRM, which I might do. Uh, it kind of depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, kind of, I have to do some university work right now, so I would like to not be putting that much time into overclocking stuff right now, which is also why video uploads have been slowing down a bit, but... I mean, if I feel like it, like, I'm, I, I, I do a lot of things on short term, so one day I just kind of feel like doing things and then I do them, so yeah. I uh, don't want to hit 20 minutes now, so this is really the end of the video. Uh, thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed, and until next time, goodbye.